Walt Disney Productions was once considered the most family-friendly studio in Hollywood. But a new documentary contends that this once great American institution has strayed from its original path. The trajectory is outlined in a new documentary called Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. Here to tell us about it is the film's executive producer, president of the Catholic League, Dr. Bill Donahue. Bill, why do a film about the ideological drift of the Walt Disney Company? Why not do something that's more church-focused? Well, the Catholic Church, of course, uh, does believe in a culture of sexual reticence, and it, we we now have a, a society of sexual recklessness, and we we are concerned the church about the, the dominant culture, not just the culture within which the church operates most of the time. We children are under attack; uh, they're they're being used by sexual engineers, and if the church doesn't speak up about this and just talks about pablum, no one's going to pay any attention to what it says. Look, we know the culture has been in trouble for some time, but when the most family-friendly industry in American history, namely Disney, takes into this woke culture and now gets involved with this whole idea of transgender madness, then there's something serious. Catholics need to speak out because our moral voice is still the preeminent one in American society. Uh, Bill, the documentary contends that the Disney brand has been politicized to advance agendas other than family entertainment. Why, in your estimation? Well, they're listening to a small but very vocal, vocal minority of people. Uh, from what we've learned, I can't prove this, apparently most gays are certainly not in promoting this. Uh, there is a radical element of gays and, and straights, for that matter. And, and those involved in the transgender movement in particular, which is a pernicious movement. First of all, there's no such thing as a transgender person. You're either a male or a female. Let's get that straight. This is a war against nature and against nature's God. And for Disney to get involved in this, and so the viewers understand, remember in Florida about a year ago, they were entertaining the idea of DeSantis, the governor there, saying we shouldn't be teaching kids in the in the kindergarten, five-year-olds, first grade, second grade, and third-year-olds, we shouldn't be teaching them that maybe you're not satisfied being a boy or a girl, and that maybe you should consider becoming uh, a person of the opposite sex. We should just let the kids be alone. We shouldn't be teaching them sex of any kind at that age. They, these kids are just getting off the tricycle, and now you're trying to transition them to another sex. That is child exploitation. It's child abuse. And for Disney to take the position on the people who say, no, it's okay to teach this. Disney wants, to, wants kids in kindergarten, first, second, and third grades to be questioned about whether they're happy being a boy or a girl. Uh, Walt Disney, as I, as I say in the movie, must be turning over in his grave. Here's a clip from uh, Walt's Disenchanted Kingdom. Watch. The largest family entertainment company in the world. Disney CEO is reversing course today. Losing their way. What happened with Disney was the CEO got bullied by his activist radical employees. Outside the iconic Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. Say gay! Say gay! I did not take an oath to subcontract out my leadership to a corporation based in Burbank, California. It's just all about trying to seize the minds of children as early as possible and to propagandize them and brainwash them. The vast majority of the gay community is not behind this crap. They see the nuclear family as a threat to them. Bill, you tried to reach out to the former Disney CEO, Bob Chapek. Why did you reach out to him? I thought that, you know, since he's listening to the radical element in the LGBT uh, community, perhaps he will, if he's open-minded at all, perhaps he'll sit down and, and, and speak with me and with Tony Perkins. I, I wrote jointly for Tony and me. Of course, I spoke to Tony first. He's the head of the Family Research Council, one of the nation's leading evangelicals. I wrote to him on April the 8th of last year. It, was, it wasn't any boilerplate, nothing incendiary. You've listened to one side. Would you please listen to our side? We'd like to sit down and talk with you. He blew us off. Hmm. And Bob Iger, his successor, he was also his predecessor, Iger's back there, uh, he was also given an opportunity to at least comment on this. They don't want to speak with anybody. Now they're going to pay the price. Let me tell you something, Ray. There's no such thing as an iron law in history, all right? Things change. 
Things can change. Disney right now has is, 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 is gone down that woke agenda and embedded himself with the far left. I think it's reversible. And I think if enough people push back, that's why I did the documentary. This is a cultural marker. We're not in this for the money. If anything, it's cost us a lot of money. We want to change the culture. And the Catholic Church's voice has to be heard. And they're doing that, I think, through the Catholic League. At least we hope to be representative of that. This is a first-class production. Jason Meath, whom we commissioned to do this, uh, did a masterful job. Now, as you report in the documentary, uh, and this was reported widely, there are certain keys, um, guideposts, if you will, that govern the way staff deals with the guests at the Disney parks. The company recently added a new key. It's called inclusion. Well, what's wrong with that, Bill, being inclusive of all the people yeah. coming to the park? Well, there's nothing wrong with, being, with diversity either, except when you use diversity as a wedge to promote uh, divisiveness and division in our society. And the term inclusion always doesn't seem to include us, does it? I've seen that dropped all over. It's a mantra. But it, if, if they believed in inclusion, why did Bob Chapek not sit down with Bill Donahue and Tony Perkins to discuss this? Why were we excluded from the conversation in the first place, since we represent uh, a, a good swath of, of America uh, as a Catholic leader and as a Protestant leader? Uh, but they didn't want to, they, they're not interested in our inclusion. And how dare they use inclusion as, as some kind of a hammer or a wedge to say it's okay to question little kids, little boys and girls uh, about their sexuality? Why would you want to do that? These kids look, are just trying to learn the alphabet, and you're getting involved in matters sexual. And I wouldn't care if it's straight or gay. It has nothing to do with that. There's a time and a place for everything. This is not the time or the place. Bill, you mentioned a moment ago that you don't believe that Disney is uh, irreparably lost. Uh, my question is, right. given the productions that they've released in recent years that you've taken great umbrage with and at, um, why go through the effort of trying to redeem them? Why not just throw your support behind another production company, another studio? Well, for one thing, Disney's still number one. I mean, they are the Cadillac, whether we like it or not. And I do believe that the average American is on our side. In fact, the survey's already proven. It's not a matter of speculation. The surveys show that the American people have had it with this whole transgender mania. They've had it with this idea of getting to kids at an early age, questioning them about their sexuality, how happy they might be. Uh, no, the, the public is on our side. But remember, the public is not organized. It's, we have a tyranny of the minority in this country, and they're pushing hard in Disney. But what I'm trying to do is to get to the shareholders and the, and the big CEO people and say, look, it's one thing to be to teach tolerance of different segments of our of our population. It's quite another to buy into this whole political agenda, which most Americans find uh, there, there's a sense of revulsion on it. This is not a close call. I think if Disney came to its senses, they'd realize they've gone too far with this. Even people who've been involved in the transgender movement now, uh, Erica Anderson and others who've been involved in this in the beginning have said, this has gone too far. We want nothing to do with it. We want Disney to go back to its moorings and, 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 and not get involved in radical politics at all. They should stay out of politics. So should sports. I mean, it, it, our whole country has become politicized on critical race theory or on transgenderism. The American people are not in favor of either. Just go out there and, and sell your brand without getting involved in politics. No, there have to be there have to be safe and sacred spaces where Americans are not subject to their divisions and political, uh, uh, you know, indoctrination, no matter where it falls. And I, and I do think we lose something. And it's it's why we're so fraught as a people, because there is no safe space. There is no quiet place where we can gather without having politics or ideology being a part of it. And that's that's a tragedy. It's an American tragedy. Well, it is. And, you know, I've been doing this job for almost 30 years, Ray, and we found this kind of left-wing uh, animus against Christianity in particular, but against all traditional moral values. We found it in, in the entertainment industry, in the media, in education, the arts, nonprofit activist sectors. What's new, and it's new only in the last five years, the healthcare industry, the military, uh, we see it in the corporate 500. Uh, it's always the elite. It's the ruling class that is the problem. The average American's a good person. The ruling class didn't get the memo. We've had it with this. Time out with this stuff. Get out of mm -hmm. politics. 
Bill Donahue, we will leave it there. You can watch the new documentary, Waltz, Disenchanted Kingdom. It's at catholicleague.org and on Amazon Prime. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much.